Hello, welcome to this course, Learn Python, a complete course for beginners. Python language has many similarities to other languages such as C, C Sharp, Perl, Java, and so on. However, there are some definite differences between their languages. In this video, I'm going to speak about the basic syntax in Python. First, let us look at the program execution. Python provides two ways to run a program using an interpreter prompt and using a script file. We have seen this in the previous video. I am going to just touch upon them quickly once again. Instructions that a Python interpreter can execute are called statements. Any program is made up of one or more statements. Usually a program consists of a number of statements split into different blocks and they are in turn stored in more than one file. We can execute these statements using python.exe. There are two different methods to execute these statements. The first one which we saw in the previous video was interactive interpreter prompt. An interactive interpreter prompt is a command line shell which gives immediate feedback for each statement while running previously executed statements in active memory. To open the interactive mode, you can just open a terminal otherwise known as command prompt and just type python. If you have set the environment variable, Automatically, the interactive terminal, which is also known as Python prompt, opens up. There, you can just type in your command and press enter and it gets executed. The other way of executing Python program is using the script mode. Let us write a small program. So, in order to execute the program, first you need to create a Python file with an extension .py and then you can type the commands in the file. Once it's done, in the terminal or the command prompt, you can type python and the file name with a complete path if it is not there in the current folder. That executes all the statements and gives you the result. That's about different ways of executing python. Now let us see the python identifiers. A python identifier is a name used to identify a variable or a function, class, module or any other object in Python. An identifier cannot start with a digit. It should always start with a letter A to Z and either in uppercase or lowercase or it can also start with an underscore followed by zero or more letters, underscores or digits. Python does not allow punctuation characters such as at the rate dollars and percent symbols within the identifier. So you can't use these three within the identifiers. Python is a case sensitive programming language. The identifier my variable with capital M and my variable without any caps are two different identifiers in Python. Here are some naming conventions for Python identifiers. These are just conventions which is commonly used by all Python developers but this is not a rule and Python still works. Class name should start with an uppercase letter. Usually all the identifiers start with a lowercase letter but class names should start with an uppercase letter. Starting an identifier with a single leading underscore indicates that it's a private identifier. Starting an identifier with two leading underscores indicates that it is a strongly private identifier. If the identifier also ends with two trailing underscores, the identifier is a language defined special name. Now that you have seen some basic conventions that are used in naming the identifiers, let us also see some of the reserved words that are there in Python. The following list shows the Python keywords or reserved words. These are reserved words and you cannot use them as a constant or variable or any other identifier name. So just make sure that you don't give these words while naming an identifier. All the Python keywords contain lowercase letters only except for few like true or false. These are the keywords. So looking at all the keywords once and trying to figure out what they mean might be quite overwhelming. So just don't worry about them. We'll cover all this in the coming videos. Let's now look at lines and indentation. Indentation refers to the spaces at the beginning of a code line. When programming in Python, 
indentation is something that you will definitely use. While in other programming languages we use indentation in code for just for readability purpose only, in Python indentation is very very important. Most of the programming languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java use braces to define a block of code. But Python does not use braces to indicate blocks of code for a class, function, definition or a control flow. Python uses indentation to indicate a block of code which is very rigidly enforced. Now we might ask what is a block? A block is a group of statements in a program or script. Usually it consists of at least one statement and of declarations for the block depending on the program or scripting language. A language which allows grouping with blocks is called a block structured language. Generally block can contain additional blocks within it as well so we get a nested block structure. A block in a script or program functions as a means to group statements to be treated as if they were one statement. In many cases it also serves as a way to limit the lexical scope of variables and functions. However when you are indenting you should be very careful with them as it can lead to severe syntax errors. For example, if you look at this code, the first line is doesn't have any indentation. It starts at the beginning of the line. If true, then we have an indent and then again else and then we have the third, fourth line with an indent. This works perfectly fine. The same code when written without indentation will generate an error. Now, if you see here, I've modified a code a little bit more. In this, there is no indentation and even this throws up an error. If I modify this particular code with proper indentation, you can see it works. The number of state spaces in indentation is up to you as a programmer. But the usual convention is to use four spaces for indentation. This program works without any error because it is indented properly. While indenting, just make sure that the number of spaces that you define for indentation is just the same and all the statements within the block must be indented with the same number of spaces. You, you can't have some part of the code with a certain, a certain number of spaces and the rest in a different number of spaces. They should all be same. Thus, in Python, all the continuous lines indented with the same number of spaces would form a block. So indentation is primarily used in Python not just for readability purpose but mainly for creating blocks. Now let's get on to multi-line. In Python we do have multi-line statements. That means unlike C, C sharp or Java where statements end with a semicolon, statements in Python typically end with a new line. Python does however allow the use of line continuation character which is a backslash to denote that the line should continue. For example, you can see this statement where a single identifier is assigned with a value and it runs into three lines but Python will still consider it as one single statement. However, if a statement contained within a square bracket or a curly bracket or around brackets, you do not need to use the line continuation character within that. For example, if you see this, I am assigning some values to this identifier and if you see at the end there is no backslash and the statement has gone up to three lines but still Python will consider these three lines as one single statement. The reason all the three are within square brackets. Now let us see use of quotation in Python. Python accepts a single quote, double quote and triple quotes to denote string literals as long as the same type of quote starts and ends the string. Triple quotes are used to span the string across multiple lines. For example, all the following three statements here are legal. If you see the first statement where 
an identifier is assigned a value Sunday and Sunday is within single quotes. So it becomes a string literal, a value that has been assigned to this identifier. That's valid. The same thing we can do with double quotes. Here you are seeing this sentence, an identifier named sentence, the value that been, that's been assigned is today is a Sunday, which has been assigned to sentence. We are using double quotes over here. It's valid. The same goes with paragraph where I'm using triple quotes. But when I'm using triple quotes, the string literal can span across multiple statements and it's still valid. Sometimes we can use these triple quotes without assigning it to our identifier to make it as a comment. Python, if it doesn't see a identifier for which this value has been assigned, it will ignore that. In that way, you can also make it as a comment. So what is a comment? Comments are generally used by programming languages to explain the code and also to make the code readable. And it's the same in Python. Comments can also be used to prevent execution when testing a code. Hash sign that is not inside a string literal begins a comment. All characters after the hash and up to the end of a physical line are part of a comment and the Python interpreter ignores that particular line or everything after the hash. Now if you can see here, this is how we write a comment. This line gets a comment. So this will be ignored by Python. The same way we have a code line over here and then we have a comment after that. So everything after this hash will be ignored by Python. When you execute, this is what you get. See, in this case, we have multiple lines. Both these lines contain the same code print hello Python world, except that the first line has a hash at the beginning. So this entire line, even though it is a code, it's still ignored by Python. Only one statement that's executed, which is the second statement over here. Python does not really have syntax for multiple comments. That's what I said earlier, right? So you can either, if you want multiple comments, you can try this approach, wherein like each line starts with a hash. Else, you can also try this approach, wherein you start with triple quotes, and then anything between these triple quotes will be considered a comment. Here you can see again that only this statement is executed. The rest is ignored by Python. So you can try this approach as well. This Jupyter Notebook is available on GitHub. You can actually try it from there. Now let us see multiple statements on a single line. Though a new line ends a statement and everything up till the new line is considered a single statement, in Python there are options to enter multiple statements in a single line. Earlier we saw how a single statement can span multiple lines. Now we are going to see how multiple statements can be written in a single line. So as I said earlier, a statement in Python ends with a new line. But if you enter a semicolon, that marks the end of a statement as well. So after that, you can go ahead and add another statement ending that with a semicolon and then continue with another and ending with that. So uh, you can go as long as you want. Here is a simple code where I'm, I have three statements all on a single line. That's it about basics of Python syntax. This is very important. If you have not understood, I would suggest you to go through this video again so that you be clear about the syntax because this is going to form the foundation for you to write Python programs from now on, which I'll be showing in the coming videos. That's it friends. We'll see you in the next video. If you have not subscribed to our video, please subscribe and do like our video. That will encourage us to create more such videos. Thank you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Thank you.